Retro Racing Reports is from San Jose Speedway, October 27, 1962. Points end tonight. The closest championship races in the history of NASCAR in California will end with tonight's San Jose main event. Rick Henderson, who has won the Fresno championship already, is 43 points ahead for the San Jose track title. If he wins the San Jose championship this year, it will be his fourth year as San Jose title winner. He was the champ in 1957, 58, and 59. The state championship race is much closer and will be decided tonight. Clyde Palmer, who was San Jose champ last year and has never won a state hardtop title, is leading state points by just eight. Henderson is second. Tonight's program has a total of 55 points up for someone if he can be the fastest qualifier, five points, and win the main event, 50 points. Second place in the main has 48 points and down two points each position. Marshall Sargent, 1960 track and state champ, moved near San Jose Speedway record for main event victories in a season last week as he won his 15th for the season. Sargent won 16 in 1960 for the current record. There's been some confusion over the record, so we looked it up. In 1960, Sargent won 16 of the 32 mains that season. Ray Ranieri held the old record 14 out of 29. This year, the schedule still has two main events left, tonight and Sunday. No points next Sunday, but it'll be a regular program. Open Comp, where anything goes as long as far as cars are concerned, is Sunday, November 11th. Sargent's winning streak got a late start. He won the fifth main of the season to set a new record, which still stands. Palmer has won six, Henderson four, with Bill Scott, Burt Follin, Ed Andrews, Cliff Isix, and Al Pombo each have won for the season. Last week, Sargent was trailed across the line by Bob Nicholson, Rick Henderson, Herb Kading, and Dick Whalen. Palmer set fast time but had traffic troubles and was forced out of the main after an accident, ranking 13th in the finish list. Those USAC midgets last Sunday were tops. If you missed it, you missed one of the best programs in many years. Pernelli Jones and his IndyCar were present, but he didn't have a ride for the midget race. A.J. Foyt did. He drove and he took fourth in the main, which was won by Bob Went of St. Louis. Crowd pleaser, though, was Dean Holden, who led the main for 25 laps and wound up placing second. George Benson was third. Jimmy Davis, the midget champ for the USAC, was sixth in the main. Went was the fastest qualifier at 15.92 and won his heat and the main for the sweep. Charlie Lawler and Bill Coulter were 1-2 in the semi. This open letter went out to all teams. Bulletin. As all of you know, the cost of living has risen each year, and insurance claims of all types have tripled in the last couple of years. The insurance company handling auto racing in the United States has informed us that driver insurance fees must be raised to $2.50 per race or no insurance. They have increased the medical limits to $8,000. This may not seem to affect you as an individual, but in California alone, within the past few years, there are race drivers who have used up their insurance or are now in trouble. So it can happen to you. The promoters who cover you and themselves with public liability insurance have also been given notice of a 25% increase in their rates. If the smaller track says Atascadero and Lakeport, for example, don't increase their gates, these increased costs will force them to close their doors. To give you an idea of what the insurance company now wants, tracks over one mile in length must pay a minimum fee for driver insurance of $2,700. Yes, $2,700 for one day of racing. Public liability costs have risen out of this world due to people suing if they stub their toe. 
If this trend continues, auto racing is out of business. It is that serious. Some speedways intend to increase the price of admission to $1.75 in an effort to offset these higher costs. Well, since 1945, auto racing prices for admission have been the same, while theaters, boxing, football, etc. have increased their prices again and again. We do not like to increase any cost of auto racing, but our hands and yours are tied. Without insurance, we cannot race. It's Bob Barkheimer, NASCAR Regional Director. The letter is dated February 6, 1962. Hey, this is Harold. Glad you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, put your comments down below. There's a lot more where this one came from.